can't see them being baptized in Jesus name right now and we got people still being delivered around the altar that's all a good thing isn't it Acts chapter 4 God bless you those of you getting a blessing just stay with it it's going to keep coming Acts chapter 4 Thank you, worship team. Thank you, this great church. Thank you, Jesus Messiah. I thank God for this handout tonight. Our study tonight in your home is going to be on perfect peace. And this was put together by two people that have been sent to POA with divine orders by God. I believe that. And that is Shane and Taryn Spears. Aren't we thankful for them? And I want you two to know how much we appreciate the time you put into this study. This is a great study. Would you give them a hand? If you got your Bibles, shout amen. Philippians 2, 9 and 10 and Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must, not we might, we must be saved. Philippians 2, 9 and 10. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him, and given him a, is that up there? And given him a, which is above every name. name. That at the name of Jesus, everything shall bow of the things in heaven and the things under the earth. My subject for just a few minutes this morning is none other name. Would you put your Bibles down and come on now. Give a little praise to God for what he has done. You may be seated. I had already been studying this message this week and I came in and I remember sitting down uh, over here on about the fifth or sixth row. Wasn't anybody in here but me and the Lord. And I began to look at this fantastic, unbelievable set. I mean, is this an unbelievable set or what? They were not, all the green stuff wasn't on this the last time I saw it a couple days ago. When I came in here for prayer last night, that is just simply breathtaking, just that area right there. It's just, it's just breathtaking. And I looked at all this and my mind began to swirl and I began to think what it's all about. Why, why are we doing Jesus Messiah? And the reason why that it all came about as you look at this set is there was a great God that looked down and saw humanity that he wanted to redeem. And God put forth his plan that he would robe himself in flesh and he would come to this earth and die for us. And all of this, all that we do, every sacrifice we made is for one reason, to let the world know that Jesus is the name of the Lord. There's no salvation in any other name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. We're talking about salvation. We're talking about being saved from a lost eternity according to the Word of God. There is no salvation under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved in any other name than the name of Jesus. A lot of followers now, big movements that sprung up around the world, and they're running entire nations, but they can't save your soul. There's only one name that can save your soul, and that name is Jesus. That settles the matter of our salvation. The name of Jesus is above every name that is named, not only in this world, 
but also in that which is to come. The name of Jesus is above all principality and power and might and dominion. The name of Jesus is above every disease that's in this room. The name of Jesus is above every sin that's in this room. The name of Jesus is above every failure that's in this room. And the name of Jesus can cast out any devil that's in this room. In the name of Jesus, lepers were healed. I don't know if Greg's here today. Is Greg here today? Greg Parker, is he here today? Where are you, Greg? Holler it out up there, would you? Just he was a leper. When you got your healing, you ran to the front of this pul pulpit. What did you say to Jesus? Yes. Is there anybody in this room that can say glory to Jesus? I'm healed and I'm clean by the name of Jesus. By that name Jesus, the lame were healed. Now this isn't going to be no deep theological message but it is going to remind you who you are and what you are and what's happened to you here. It was in the name of Jesus that deaf ears were unstopped. I love that part of Messiah when they would come up and the Lord reached over and touched her ears and she could not hear nor speak. And she touched that ear and all of a sudden, D -d 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 Jesus, to know that he opened deaf ears. He gave that tongue the words to speak. Broken hearts are healed through the name of Jesus. It's by the authority of the name of Jesus that devils came out of the possessed and they went back to hell to where they came from. And today I feel like in this room, some people are going to be delivered from some things that's had you bound. Vanessa's standing back there. Remain standing right there just a moment. Would you stand back, Vanessa? Would you stand right there? She came last night. She was oppressed, and the devil was attacking her. We laid hands on her. We began to plead the name. And when I left last night, she didn't have the victory. But she came running the aisle and met me as soon as I walked out this morning. She said, when I got home or on my way home, I began to just praise God and call on the name. She said, God touched me and God delivered me from the things that had me down. <laughs> to our guests, you're with a group of people that we believe that you can take a handkerchief and that you can take this oil and you can anoint it in Jesus' name and you can take it and apply it to six pe sick people and they will be healed. That's how strong we believe the name of Jesus. Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray in Acts chapter 3. And there was a lame man that had been laid at gate beautiful every day. And they looked down at him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. Here's what I got to give you today. I don't give great Bible studies. Here's all I got to give you today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What I can give you today is in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Come out of what's had you bound. Step out of the things that's had you locked down. And the Bible says that lame man went leaping and walking and praising God because that name is above every name. Every born-again believer in this book of Acts believe without exception that signs and wonders may be done by the name of Jesus Christ. And that name, this morning, at 1128, has not lost any of its power. I want to tell those of you, and I know what I'm battling here this morning because I know what a lot of you are going through because I've counseled with you, I've talked with you, and I've also been brought in by prayer requests. And I know this morning that I've got a job to convince you again just how powerful the name of Jesus is. 
But I want you to know I don't care how long you've been praying. I don't care how long the request you've been given to God. It doesn't take God long to take care of it. And I believe this morning is going to be your day and your service where through the name of Jesus you receive your deliverance. It has lost none of its power in his name and through faith in his name. They're delivered from anything and everything that's in this room. There's healing in the name. There's salvation in the name. There's remission of all your sins in the name. Salvation in no other name, other heaven than the name of Jesus. I want to pause just a moment. I want to say this. If you're in this room and you have repented of your sins, this is important. Listen to me. You have repented of your sins and you've given your heart to God and you've accepted him as your Savior. What a great move that that is in the step of repentance. There is nothing any more power than repentance. There is nothing more powerful than asking the Lord to come into your life. But in asking for forgiveness and in getting forgiveness, it does not remit your sins. It does not blot out your sins. There's only one way that your sin can be blotted out. There is only one way that your name, uh, your sin can be remitted. There's only one way that your sin can be covered. There's only one way your sin can be washed away. There's only one way that your sin can be cast to the back of God. There's only one way that you can be pardoned today. There's only one way that you can be purged today. There's only one way that you can have deliverance today. There's only one way that every sin can be canceled today. That is when. Not by church membership. Not when you was baptized in a baby in your church. Not when you were baptized years ago. There's only one way that your sins can be blotted out and washed away. And that's when you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. Every sin you've ever committed is washed away in the name of Jesus. I wish I could see that baptistry. I'm used to climbing things. I wish I could see that baptistry, but I'm going to get up here as close to it as I can get to it. And I'm going to tell you that right here behind this curtain, there is a baptistry. And in that baptistry is water. And we put you under, and when we put you under, we say upon the festival of your faith and your obedience to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And when you come up out of that water, every sin you've ever committed, every sin you've ever done. Y'all go ahead and worship God. I'm okay. I'm not going to fall. I like all these. I like climbing things. You shouldn't have put them up here. When you do that, every sin is washed away and you're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm talking about murdering sins. I'm talking about drug sins. I'm talking about adultery sins. I'm talking about fornication sin. I'm talking about homosexual sin. I'm talking about any sin you want to name. We've got a name, and he's got the blood that can take care of any sin that you've committed. I've come here this morning. Mickey will tell you. Mickey will tell you yesterday, I didn't hardly re leave my recliner in front of our fireplace. I stayed there. I was praying and I was touching God. And I, I decided yesterday afternoon, if God would help me, I'm going to come to this pulpit. It's going to be very simple. But when I get through preaching, those of you that's been baptized in Jesus' name, I'm going to try to preach you out of the condemnation that you hadn't let go of when you got baptized in Jesus' name. And those of you that hadn't been baptized in Jesus' name, I hope you're running down the aisle saying, Preacher, I want my sins washed away. I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. <laughs> Nothing like that name. This is the day to repent of your sins. This is the day to get your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Don't chance just having your sins forgiven. You need your sins remitted because no sin can enter there. And nothing can wash away your sins but the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you're baptized in Jesus' name, 
he cuts your heart open. And he goes in there and he takes away the foreskin of that heart. And he cleans out all those sins that you committed. He sews you back together. Now, not literally. But he sews you back together. And he puts a new heart in you. And you are a new man. And like John Bennett used to say, when I got baptized in Jesus' name, there was a new man walking in my shoes. And this morning when you leave this place, there can be a new man walking in your shoes. That name is far above all principalities and power and might and dominion. And every name that can be named, this name is above it. The name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Every atheist knee is going down. Every infidel knee is going down. Every Muslim's knee is going down. Everybody is going to bow one day. You can beat the rush and do it today. But if you don't do it today, everybody at one point is going to bow down on your knee and you're going to say, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It is the preeminent exclusive name. It is a glorious universal name. It is an exalted name. It is a conquering name. Jesus conquered all of hell with the name of Jesus. Matthew tells us how that the devils, as Jesus just knew, drew nigh, the Bible says, they begged him, the devils begged him not to torment them before their time. It's Matthew 8, 28 and 29. And when he was come to the other side of the country of Janaris, there met with him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. They were exceeding fierce. Anybody had any devils that's really mad at you? Would you raise your hand just upset? You've been battling these spirit things coming against you. Two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs. They, they were ticked off. So that no man might pass by that way. No one would go that way. And behold, they cried out saying, What have we do to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God? Art thou come hither to torment us before the time? Two men asked the Lord, why have you come here before your time? They knew he was coming. They knew their day was, this is good and this is coming revelation. They knew their day was coming. They knew they were going to have to get out of you. They just didn't think it was going to be today. They just thought you was going to come here and pat a cake for Jesus. They just thought you was going to come here. They knew you were going to get delivered one day, but they had no idea. At about 20 minutes to 12, you made your mind up. Jesus, 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 Jesus. They cried out, Jesus, Jesus. Those old devils tormented us and they got up and fled. I noticed that I was reading that and I had never seen this. Mother usually teaches me about everything in the Word of God that Daddy didn't teach me. And I always thought that was just one person there, but there was two men that came out of there. And he took care of both of them. It doesn't matter how many it is to Jesus. They understood that there was a time that was fixed that they were coming out. And I want every devil in this room and every demon and spirit that's inside of our people or our visitors, I want you to know your time is numbered and your days are numbered. And in the name of Jesus, you will let go of our situation. Your time is fixed. Your days are numbered. My children are going to be saved. You are going to let go of my finances. You are going to let go of my family. You are, devil, going to let go of my marriage. You've been tormenting me, but I've come here today. The devil said he's come here to torment us. We ought to let the devil know we've come here today to torment him. That's what the Bible says. There's such a shout in this place, Pastor Gentry. Andrew, there's such a shout in this place today. You need to let him know you've come to torment him today. He's been tormenting you. Turn the tables this morning. I have come.
You've tormented me long enough. You've been in my mind long enough. You fooled with me long enough. You put imaginations in my mind long enough. You've had me worried about things long enough. You've kept me up every night long enough. I've been sleepless long enough. You've been tormenting me. But today, I have come here to torment you. Today, devil, I have come here to torment you. I've come to take back everything you've tried to steal from me. I've come to take back everything you've stolen from me. I've come to get on your nerves. I've come to give you a nervous breakdown. You better go get you a good bottle of Valium, devil. You're getting ready to have a bad day. It was the apostles and that early church shield of protection. They wouldn't do anything without the name of Jesus. Why would we call ourselves apostolic and only dress like it and not act like it? Why would we call ourselves apostolic and not take that name that is above every name? If we're apostolic, then it's more than coming to church and doing a little bit of this, singing three songs with some of the greatest music you'll ever want to hear and hear great preaching like these three guys over here. It's more than that. This is a place where people are healed. This is a place where people are delivered. This is not a church. This is a hospital. And those of you watching online, it's a place where you can be healed in your car, in your home, wherever you are. In the name of Jesus. I speak it. Put that camera back on for me, please. Thank you. I speak to any minister or wife that's watching me. I speak to all that's discouraged in the faith. I speak to all of you that the devil's been coming against you through the authority and the power of the name of Jesus. I speak deliverance for you. I command those spirits of oppression and depression to fall off of you in the name of Jesus as we speak the word. It needs to be a rally cry in us today. It needs to be something rallying in us. It was their only credentials. That's the only thing the apostles had. Let me tell you something. That's the only thing you have. Thank God for this church. Thank God for mother and daddy. We're celebrating being here 70 years. Thank God for Mickey Mangan. Thank God for three, these three guys over here. But you let me tell you, you got some stuff that none of those people can handle. And I got some stuff that none of those people can handle. We've got the district soup here today, and you got some stuff that the board can't handle. There's some stuff in this room that only Jesus can take care of. And the devil has been harming us. He's had us in chains. He's had our mouth closed. He's had us locked down of our situation. But today I've come to preach you out of your prison. I've come to preach you out of your chain. I've come to preach deliverance in your soul. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it. Shout it in the balcony. Shout it from the back row of the balcony. Shout it. Dance your way out. Leap your way out. Clap your way out. Speak that name way out. Yeah, but those apostles, pastor, they were something. They were unlearned fishermen. They wasn't even educated men. Bible called them unlearned. They had no political power. They didn't have money, but they had an all-powerful, conquering name of Jesus. They had a name that could be spoken, and deliverance came. When Peter healed that lame man at that gate, beautiful. Chapter 4, after, after 3, when we get to 4, we talked about 3, but when we get to 4, he's now before all the Pharisees and the Sanhedrin. He said, when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Or by? I want you all to read that with me. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Oh, you asking by what power? You asking by what name? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to this impotent man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you 
and all the people in Alexandria, Pineville, Central Louisiana, Louisiana, America, and around the world, be it known unto all the people of Israel that by the name, it didn't even say by Jesus, it said by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which had become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There's nothing like the name of Jesus. We had a man in this church that used to stand up periodically and he would scream a scripture and it would scare the fire out of every guest that's in this room. I, wait. I was setting that up, George. He took it away from me. Some men trust in horses. Some men trust in chariots, but we will trust in the name of the Lord. You can have your horses. You can have your chariots. I'm going to put my trust. This is empty. This is empty. This is empty. I am going to put my trust in the name of the Lord. Could you shout with a clap to the Lord a praise? Oh, He said, I can't be here, so I'm going to leave you power of attorney. My dad, when he got sick, thanks to Mike Bollinger, one of attorneys came over and set things up for us. And dad made me the power of attorney. Thank God he gave it to me. He gave it to me. I guess he's afraid maybe you was going to run off with somebody or something. He, he should have had better sense than that, shouldn't he? Uh-oh. She's up. I told you, you go after a man, I'm going to shoot him and you. My dad made me the power of attorney. That means, Brian, I can do anything that he was going to do in his name. I can sign his checkbook. I can go where he would go. I can go get his money. I was my father's and still is power of of attorney and Jesus said I'm going away I can't stay with you but I'm going to make you my power of attorney that while I'm not here whatever you sign whatever you write you write the check I'll back it up you sign the papers I'll fulfill it you take care of it that's why that name got to be our battle cry today in song in prayer in song it's got to be our name. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. Jesus, what a wonder you are. Jesus. But this was my daddy's. There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name. There's healing in the name of the Lord. Yes, there's healing. <laughs> there's healing in the name. There's healing in the name. Two of our girls. It's the name. Everybody say it's the name. Turn to somebody and say, if you don't know what he's preaching about, he's preaching about the name. Turn back to him and say, if you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, today's your day. Two of our young ladies, Janelle here this morning, Janelle Jowers, stand up back there, Janelle. There she is right there. And it was... Uh, 
Ray Couples. They were at the walk and a man came up and robbed them. And if I don't get the story right, please correct me because I leave, or if I'm close, I don't want evangelistic what I'm saying. And they gave them, saying in Jesus' name, the purse. And when they gave the man the purse, either Janelle or Ray said, Sir, you can have our money and you can have my purse. But my Bible's in there. Would you please give me my Bible back? That man took that purse, either threw it or handed it back. He said, my mother taught me better than this. I should have never done this. There she is back there. You can ask her about it. That's what the name of Jesus will do. That's how the name of Jesus will protect you. That's how the name of Jesus will cover you. That blind man in the Bible, I'm like him today. I got in the tree last, uh, Bartim, I got in the tree a couple Sundays ago. Gentry, you preached a great message last Sunday, and John Russell preached a great message. I thank God for last Sunday. But I, I climbed that tree, and you know what I was doing as I was acting like the man in the tree. But blind Bartimaeus, he was passing by. And with something, you're blind, and the blind man healer is passing by in front of you. I'm going to get his attention. He got to crying out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. They said, shh, be quiet. He's come to town. All the city officials, everybody, all the POA members that don't like worship and shouting and magnifying God. Everybody that's embarrassed when somebody runs around this place. Everybody don't like our church dancing and praising. All those people that were saying, shh, be quiet. Don't act like that. Don't preach these kind of messages, Pastor. We have guests here today. We don't need to be acting this way. They need to know that we're a good church. You just don't need to be getting us up and rowdy like this today, Pastor. It was those kind of people trying to shut him up. But the Bible said he cried much the louder. Jesus! Hey, hey! Hey! Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. So here I am, Jesus. It's not my mother. It's not my brother. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And I want you to know something, Jesus. You're not leaving this service. You're not getting out of this place until I get what I came for. And in the name of Jesus, I claim it by faith. I'm halfway through with this message, so I better go ahead and close it so I don't preach the other half. But at the very mention of the saving name, you think I'm kidding, I'm not kidding. But at the saving name of Jesus, every devil has to bow. Thought of another incident, I'm closed with this. Don't go to the music, because music will put them in a mood, be like a funeral home. It ain't your fault, music. I just don't want people to be able to walk out with music. I wonder if they leave here today, they're going to walk out over praise. They're going to walk out over somebody clapping their hands. They're going to walk out over somebody being delivered. They're going to walk out over somebody being set free by the name of the Lord. So I called Phyllis Van Gessel. She couldn't be here this morning. But I said, I want you to retell me the story because I'm telling it in the morning and I don't want to evangelistically speak. I don't want to add to, nor do I want to take from. So would you tell me the story? This was a time, what, 15, 20, 25 years ago, when the garden rapist was in the garden district and was going around in the garden district committing rapes on our sweet ladies of central Louisiana. And he came, she didn't know who it was, knocked on her door, on the side door, so she thought it was a friend. So when she opened up the door, the man had a mask on and he grabbed Phyllis and he took her over to the couch and threw her on the couch and he got on top of her and she said, Pastor, last night in my recline, this is what she told me. She said, I just called the name of Jesus and the Lord, I said, if I can get a hold of that mask, if God, if you'll just get one of my arm blues, I'll grab that mask. 
And she said, I got my hand loose and I grabbed his mask. And when I yanked that mask off of me calling the name of Jesus, he took off running and I hadn't seen him since. She told me that last night. I said, well, did they ever catch him? She said, I don't know and I don't care. I got delivered and that's what I'm thankful for. That's how powerful the name of Jesus is. That's how strong the name of Jesus is. And this morning, I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're up against. It's the name of Jesus and it delivered. Would you get on your feet and shout to the Lord? Now, usually, uh, freeze, freeze. Usually right now, I watched last Sunday when Gentry got ready to go, it was like a mass action. Freeze, don't anybody leave. Surely you can stay to 12 o'clock and we still got six more minutes, so don't put me on the Freeze, don't leave. Do like Keith, dear Messiah. Freeze! God's getting ready to do something in this place. I have preached it and God has assured me, I don't know whether it's one or whether it's hundreds that's going to be delivered today. But somebody is going to have a testimony before tonight of what God has done in your life. So I want you, freeze. I want you to leave where you're standing. And I want you to walk, if you would, to the front and balcony. You can walk the rail. Don't leave. The, the, the ushers lock those doors up there. Somebody get in that hallway right there. Don't let them through. Put some Romans there, if you don't mind. We need some Romans dressed up. I want you to come right there. That's it. Just come the rail. Everybody's obedient to pastor, I know. If you're a guest, you'll want to join us. We're not joining a church here. I said, just get as close as you. I tell you what, let's do. Y'all come on up here on the platform, would you? Because our aisles are crowded. Would y'all, Tim, y'all coming up. Nikki, y'all coming up. Andrew, coming up. Mother, Brian. I said, y'all keep on flowing. Flow up here on the platform. Come on up. Y'all come up. Come on up. Come on up. Don't anybody leave. Is all the doors locked? Ushers, close the doors. Oh, somebody don't know what they're getting ready to get. Keep coming. Come on. Come on. That's it. Keep coming. Make room for everybody. Let's get everybody out of the pews. Nobody be in a pew today. That's it. Come on. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Now. Is everybody in place? Some still coming. Everybody. That, good. There's nobody in the pews. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, how many of you walked in this room today with something that you need Jesus to take? Only Jesus can take care of. Would you raise your hand? Would, would you just keep those hands up just a moment? Only Jesus can take care of it. My sweet brothers and sisters, what I have preached to you this morning is real. We have power in the name of Jesus. Now here's what we're going to do first of all. Those of you that do not, if you've never spoken with tongues, would you raise your hand? We're not going to pour it on. If you've never spoken with tongues, would you raise your hand? There's one. Is there anybody else that's never spoken with tongues? There's two. Thank you, buddy. There's three, four. God bless that sweet couple. There's five. There's five in here that's never six, seven. There's seven that's never spoken with tongues. Eight. There's eight that's never spoken with tongues. I believe all eight are getting ready to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now, here's what I want us to do. And I want from the depths of your soul, I want you to join me. I don't need you to kneel down. I'm going to do it for the whole congregation. It's going to be an act of faith because we're standing too close together. But I want us for a minute or two just repent before God. Ask God to forgive us. Ask God to heal us. And then I'm going to give a command in a moment. And God's going to fill us with fresh fire. 
and God's going to give you a new revelation of the name of Jesus. If you've been in this church for 50 years, God's going to give you a new revelation of the name of Jesus, and you're going to leave here differently than you came. So would you raise both of your hands and begin to repent before Almighty God right now in the name of our great God. Oh, Lord, I pour out my heart. Me for the things that I have said or done, for the things that have displeased you, oh God. For the things that I have done that displeased myself with my emotions or with my cares. Forgive me, oh God. I ask you to forgive this congregation as we speak, God, out of forgiveness, knowing that your cross is all powerful and your blood will never lose its power. I speak it in the name of Jesus that you will forgive us and that you will take care of our sins in the name of Jesus. Now I want to ask this church something. How many of you believe that the Lord just forgave your sins? Would you raise your hand? I do too. I believe he just forgave me of my sins. So I don't care if you've had the Holy Ghost five minutes or if you've had the Holy Ghost 70 years. I'm getting ready to give a command and when I do, I want you to throw both hands up. I want you to begin to say hallelujah. And I believe everything in this building from the pastor on is going to begin to speak a heavenly language as the Spirit of God gives the utterance. And there's going to be a revival of the Holy Ghost in this church when we leave this place. And it will go to our homes tonight when we have our meetings. Now through the authority and the power of the all-powerful name of Jesus, I command us to receive.